In round seven, Gary Ablett kicked a hat-trick of last quarter goals to lead the Suns to a win over the Roos. The Hawks had a 145-point win over the Saints, and I had my first ever win in Adelaide as the Dees just pipped the Crows. With the invaders coming from faraway galaxies, the Pies huddled to say their prayers. But this is what you'd call the true believer, selling ice cream at the footy in Canberra on a six-degree day. Jack Viney successfully appealed a two-week suspension. Oh, that's a sandwich. And while Brian Lake and Sam Mitchell faced stints on the sidelines, Chris Mayne was lucky to survive this collision with an out-of-control umpy. My Demons broke a 12-year drought in Adelaide. Outside of the boot. Oh, that'll hurt. The Dockers claim bragging rights in the West's big rivalry. That is awesome. While in the East, it was a forgettable night for Dale Thomas, as a big win to the Pies left Mick in no mood for small talk. It was just one of those nights, you think, where things didn't quite come off. Uh, you're the same game as me. Round seven, Carlton v Collingwood. Collingwood, T Langdon, one vote. Collingwood, D Beams, two votes. Collingwood, J Elliott, three votes. Hawthorne v St Kilda. Hawthorne, L Hodge, one vote. Hawthorne, L Bruce, two votes. Hawthorne, G Birchall, three votes. GWS v Port Adelaide. Port Adelaide, J Schultz, one vote. GWS, C Ward, two votes. Port Adelaide, J Polek, three votes. Adelaide v Melbourne. Melbourne, J Howe, one vote. Melbourne, C. Dawes, two votes. Adelaide, P. Dangerfield, three votes. Essendon v. Western Bulldogs. Essendon, C. Hooker, one vote. Western Bulldogs, A. Cooney, two votes. Western Bulldogs, L. Dalhouse, three votes. Brisbane v. Sydney. Sydney, J. Kennedy, one vote. Sydney, J. McVeigh, two votes. Sydney, D. Hanabry, three votes. North Melbourne v. Gold Coast. Gold Coast, D. Prestia, one vote. Gold Coast, G. Ablett, two votes. North Melbourne, L. Hansen, three votes. Geelong v. Richmond. Geelong, M. Stokes, one vote. Richmond, R. Conker, two votes. Geelong, S. Johnson, three votes. West Coast v. Fremantle. Fremantle, H. Ballantyne, one vote. Fremantle, A. Sanderlands, two votes. Fremantle, L. Neal, three votes. Well, I've got the Geelong skipper here, Joel Selwood. And Selwood, what are you, six votes back now? Can you charge home? Can you get over the top of Gaz? Oh, I'm not sure, mate. I think he's going to put a few more on me just yet, so we'll wait and see. Can you have a word to Stevie J and tell him to stop pinching all those votes? He's ineligible. He doesn't need them. Yeah, I know. He'd be sitting back pretty happy with himself right now, so I'm not sure where he is, but uh, he's probably got the wobble up somewhere. Now, you've brought your brother Troy along tonight as your day. Is that just keeping your options open for later on? Oh, it's probably where we leave the conversation here and we <laughs> throw back to whoever's next. Uh, very good, mate. Good luck uh, for the rest of the night. Enjoy it. Thank you, mate. Cheers. Light him up. Round eight, the first of the buy rounds, saw Buddy Fever reach new levels ahead of the much anticipated first meeting with his old teammates. And despite all the pressure, the big fella didn't disappoint. Buddy's kick is on the way and he's got it. Buddy did it all with 21 possessions, six free kicks against, seven behinds and two goals. But more importantly, he had the last laugh as the Swans upset the Hawks. On a night when the MCG turned pink, the Dogs down the Ds, while the Bombers scraped home in Brisbane. Opens it up. Get the game over. The power jumped back on top of the ladder. While another familiar name had his own contender. Carefully, Jeremy But this week wasn't so much about how, no way. but more how many. He's got 10 for Mark. As Josh Kennedy went one better than a perfect 10. Breathtaking. <laughs> 11 straight for Josh Kennedy. Round eight, Sydney v Hawthorne. Sydney L Franklin, one vote. Sydney J Kennedy, two votes. Sydney D Hanabry, three votes. Port Adelaide v Fremantle. Port Adelaide T. Boak, one vote. Fremantle N. Fife, two votes. Port Adelaide C. Wingard, three votes. Brisbane v Essendon. Brisbane T. Rockliffe, one vote. Essendon J. Watson, two votes. Essendon B. Goddard, three votes. Melbourne v Western Bulldogs. Melbourne D. Tyson, one vote. Western Bulldogs S. Cramery, two votes. 
Western Bulldogs, T Liberatore, three votes. West Coast VGWS, West Coast L Shuey, one vote. West Coast M Pritis, two votes. West Coast J Kennedy, three votes. St Kilda v Carlton, St Kilda N Rewalt, one vote. Carlton K Simpson, two votes. Carlton C Yaron, three votes. So we get to the end of round eight. So the first of the buys kicking in. Gary Ablett had a buy in round eight. He had 14 votes after round seven. No player's ever done that in the history of the Brownlow medal. He's also the fifth player to get to 200 votes career-wise. It's a heck of an achievement. And he leads by three from Paddy Dangerfield and Stevie J with Dan Hannabury. Well, the coaches are always a source of never-ending entertainment. So let's take a look at some of their best work this season. Oh. Anyone need to fix that one, or is that OK? Oh, I feel like a rock star here. I've got the microphone. Play the tape from last week, eh? Save us all some time. Where's Roger? Um, Guy, I guess you were... That's you, Fraser. Roger, the Dodger. What's your opinion? Yeah. Any other questions? He's got a nickname. His nickname is the Bobcat. Sorry, choke my hand, He just comes in and just, like, just smashes it. Well, yeah, not well, he, but... oh, yeah. oh. Sorry, I didn't really catch any of that. <coughs> oh, I love coaching and... Uh... I got a couple of uh, bring back Boltons as I was coming down. Big hands and long gadgets. So I'm going through puberty again. Fair dinkum. I find it funny. I told you he woke up ill and they were talking about corn. So, yeah, I'm telling you the truth. Towards the start of the year, here comes the puberty again. <coughs> <laughs> I did. <laughs> did you really? Played a few, few, few games in the wet this year. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going for a beer, you bloke. See you later. <laughs> Present the official 2014 Hungry Jacks Goal of the Year. Please welcome Richmond's superstar and leading goal kicker at the MCG, Matthew Richardson. Well, thank you. How good was that goal of buddies? I could watch that all night. Hopefully, we see a couple of those at the MCG on the weekend. Now, excuse me, I'm just going to read that auto cue. You see that right behind that camera down there? Well, as I know only too well, and as you can see from that package, goal kicking certainly can take some skill, know-how, and definitely some luck. This season, we witnessed some truly great goals. Let's take a look now at the top three nominations for the 2014 Hungry Jacks Goal of the Year. Goal number one, Eddie Betts, Adelaide Crow. There's Eddie Betts again, keeps it alive. It's oh, right off oh, He turns to the ground and he says, I'm Eddie Betts. I can do that sort of thing. Marcus Bontempelli, Western Bulldog. Let's see the bomb works this time. Minson, they all fell down. Frawley, will they concede it behind here? He's done it again. Dangerous to do that. Frawley, Stephen Tweber, Bontempelli found a way out. Matt White, Port Adelaide. And away he goes, White. No support. Takes ball. it under his arm. Have another bounce. And he does. White chase. He just puts the ball on the accelerator. He draws away. What a magnificent run. Can he cap it up with a goal? Oh, yes, he can. One of the goals of the year. The goal of the year. How cool was that? There is, he had no options, White. No, he had no options. He had to carry the ball. 
Oh, they're all cracking goals, but it's my pleasure now to announce that the winner of the 2014 Hungry Jacks Goal of the Year is Matt White from the Port Adelaide Footy Club. And away goes White. No support. Tucks ball. it under his arm. Have another bounce. And he does. He just puts the ball oh. on the accelerator. He draws away. What a magnificent run. Can he cap it off with a goal? Oh, yes, he oh. can. One of the goals of the year. Well, Whitey, you've always loved to run, but that was absolutely out of control. What are you doing? I heard someone say it was um, like an Oz kick where you just keep running and that's what I was thinking, I think. I don't know. It was just one of those, uh, one of those ones where I, I knew I could get around Morrow um, if he didn't get a hand on me and um, just took the opportunity. At what stage did you start thinking, gee, I'm a chance here. I might be able to go all the way and kick the goal. Uh, I wasn't until I got to when Morrow tried to lunge at me there um, when I turned. That was probably it there. But other than that, I was a bit petrified of what I was going to do, really. And kicking against your old side, the Tigers. Why did you do it to the Tigers? Why? Um, no comment. No, it was just an opportunity, mate. It's one of the ones you get. No, it was a great goal, everybody. Congratulate Matt White on winning goal of the year. What well up, Whitey? In round nine, a frenzied Adelaide Oval crowd controversially drowned out the siren during the Crows win over the Pies. While Gary Ablett cemented his Brownlow favouritism with four goals and 37 possessions. It wasn't such a good week for Stevie J after a little disagreement with Ryan Crowley put him out of Brownlow running on a night when the Dockers ran rings around the Cats. He just looked at him and he said, I have got to cover. Matthew Pavlich kicked his 600th goal to celebrate his 300th game in style. Well, this is a great moment, both sides, great respect, lining up. But it wasn't enough to impress the coach, who used the post-match presser to catch up on some shut-eye. The Tigers of old gathered to pay tribute to Tommy Hafey. But it was the Demons Day. 55, this could go over the head and bounce through. It does! as Melbourne celebrated a three-goal win. Just a magic feeling. They're over the moon at the moment. While on a memorable night for my Crows, Adelaide unveiled new recruit Charlie Cameron. Welcome to the big time! And at the same time, unleashed the 19th man. So loud, you could not hear the sound. Round nine, Adelaide v Collingwood. Adelaide R. Sloan, one vote. Adelaide J. Jenkins, two votes. Adelaide P. Dangerfield, three votes. Essendon v Sydney. Sydney L. Franklin, one vote. Sydney C. Bird, two votes. Sydney J. Kennedy, three votes. Richmond v Melbourne. Melbourne D. Tyson, one vote. Richmond D. Martin, two votes. Melbourne N. Jones, three votes. North Melbourne v Brisbane. North Melbourne L. Thomas, one vote. North Melbourne S. Gibson, two votes. North Melbourne B. Harvey, three votes. Fremantle v Geelong. Fremantle H. Ballantyne, one vote. Geelong, J. Selwood, two votes. Fremantle, D. Mundy, three votes. St Kilda v Gold Coast. Gold Coast, J. O'Meara, one vote. St Kilda, L. Hayes, two votes. Gold Coast, G. Ablett, three votes. Gee. Well, what a remarkable year. We know he had Gary Ablett. You can have a look at this leaderboard after nine rounds. There's still four ticks there. We know what happens at the end of round 16, but Gary at the moment leads by three. Paddy Dangerfield having another great poll. Stevie J. Look at Josh Kennedy. He's polled in six matches so far. The same number as Gary, but he hasn't had quite the number threes, but he's within six, and Dan Hanabry, his teammate. So it's Gary Ablett by three over Paddy Dangerfield after nine rounds in the 2014 Brownlow medal. Round 10, the last of the bye rounds, saw one play two in a top of the table clash. A record crowd at Adelaide Oval, backed in to watch my power take on the Premiers, and they weren't disappointed. We Chad Wingard had a contender for both handball, the handball of the year. and goal of the year. Awesome foot candy, not once, not twice, and then bang! As Port won a thriller, Gary Ablett breathed a sigh of relief after escaping sanction for an elbow to Liam Pickin. But there was no escape for Elliot Yeo, who paid the price for forgetting his mouth guard. He's lost two teeth. You could see him come out there. The lights were out for the ruse. Well, they used to play ACDC <laughs> in the ruse. Now we're having to sleep before the games. <laughs> who were dealt a knockout blow by the Cats. Corey Enright brings the house down. The Tigers are unlikely to win the cheer squad spelling bee. And while Brett Delidio celebrated 200 games, 
It was Jack's day. And Jack is back. back. With the footy falling in his lap. Between his legs. Jack made it legs 11. For the biggest haul of his career, Jack Rebold has 11. Round 10. Geelong v North Melbourne. Geelong J. Kelly, one vote. Geelong T. Hawkins, two votes. Geelong J. Bartell, three votes. GWS v Richmond. Richmond v Deledio, one vote. Richmond D. Martin, two votes. Richmond J. Rewalt, two, three votes. Collingwood v West Coast. Collingwood D. Beams, one vote. Collingwood S. Pendlebury, two votes. West Coast M. Prittis, three votes. Port Adelaide v Hawthorne. Port Adelaide J. Polek, one vote. Hawthorne J. Lewis, two votes. Port Adelaide T. Boat, three votes. Gold Coast v Western Bulldogs. Gold Coast S. May, one vote. Gold Coast T. Lynch, three votes. Gold Coast D. Prestia, three votes. Carlton v Adelaide. Carlton B. Gibbs, one vote. Adelaide S. Thompson, two votes. Carlton K. Simpson, three votes. So through those by rounds, so Gary Ablett still leads by three and Jordan Lewis' name has been read out. So don't go anywhere because still to come, the life broker mark of the year, a tribute to this year's retirees, Kevin Sheedy, and the 2014 Brownlow medal count continues. Swiss and the AFL are giving you the chance to win a double pass to the Swiss Marquee on Stakes Day. To win, nominate your Swiss Best Dressed online at afl.com.au slash Swiss Best Dressed. You'll need an active Twitter account to enter. Simply vote and share for who you think is the best dressed and you'll go into the random draw to win. Swiss, the choice of the AFL. Round 11, the Indigenous round. Saw the Swans do the unthinkable and beat the Cats by 110 points. While closer to home, it was an absolute thriller for my Lions in our clash with the Blues. With a little Irish flair. Not to mention some special sauce. Brisbane snuck home by seven points. Footy had a new look. Yeah, it's a fantastic sight. As Alice Springs temporarily became Jeremy Springs. Oh, hell! Horizontal hell this time! The Cats hit the wall in Sydney, with Buddy and Kurt Tippett combining for nine goals. Oh, it's World Cup style! A seven-point win over the Giants gave the Hawks' filling coach, Brendan Bolton, a few tense moments. Not so Mark Thompson, who was anything but tense. Roger. It was a sweet dream time at the G for the Bombers as a painful night for the Tigers. Oh, oh, no. oh no. Left their fans looking for disguises. Doesn't want his workmates to know. Round 11. Sydney v Geelong. Sydney K. Tippett, one vote. Sydney L. Franklin, two votes. Sydney N. Malcheski, three votes. St Kilda v Collingwood, Collingwood T Cloak, one vote. Collingwood J Elliott, two votes. Collingwood D Beams, three votes. Melbourne v Port Adelaide, Port Adelaide R Gray, one vote. Port Adelaide K Corns, two votes. Melbourne D Tyson, three votes. Brisbane v Carlton, Carlton R Warnock, one vote. Carlton M Murphy, two votes. Brisbane T Rockliffe, three votes. Essendon v Richmond, Essendon B Stanton, one vote. Essendon B Howlett, two votes. Essen and J. Watson, three votes. Adelaide v. Gold Coast. Adelaide B. Smith, one vote. Gold Coast D. Swallow, two votes. Adelaide T. Walker, three votes. Western Bulldogs v. Fremantle. Western Bulldogs T. Liberatore, one vote. Fremantle M. Barlow, two votes. Fremantle S. Hill, three votes. Hawthorne v. GWS. GWS D. Smith, one vote. Hawthorne I. Smith, two votes. GWS C. Ward, three votes. West Coast v North Melbourne. West Coast M. Prittis, one vote. North Melbourne N. Del Santo, two votes. North Melbourne B. Cunnington, three votes. So no change there to the top of the leaderboard. Matt Prittis starting to move up a bit, but Gary Ablett still leading Paddy Dangerfield by three after 11 rounds in the 2014 Brownlow. And what a stellar cast of performers we have when we talk about this season's retirees. A breathtakingly courageous lion, a gritty premiership captain, a revolutionary ruckman, a four-time All-Australian and a genuine footballer's footballer, just to name a few. 
let's pay tribute to the greats of the game who have hung up the boots in season 2014. To finally realise that it's all over, it, it is a little bit sad. And I think when you first walk into a club and you, you hear the older guys talk about how quickly it can go and to make the most of it, you certainly don't ignore it. You heed that advice, but you, you feel like that that's way off in the distance and you'll cross that bridge when you come to it. Uh, I think telling your teammates is the hardest thing, um, that you, you, you're going to hang them up. That's it for me. You know, I've got nothing left, so thank you for everything. Just really proud to be able to play for one club. To be able to share in successes and also lean on each other when times get tough, that's what's... Um, you know, the, probably the best thing about playing AFL footy. It doesn't get better than that. We've been lucky enough to, to win a premiership. Um, I mean, it's the ultimate in footy. It's what you play for. Lutz, Robert Thompson, Jonathan Brown. And to look across and see the, the joy in your teammates' eyes, but also the supporters who, who ride the bumps with you. I think if you know that it's your last game, um, you know, I think you speak to people that have, that have been there and done that before and, uh, and they tell you that if you get a spare second just to have a look around and, and soak it all in. One of the saddest sporting moments you're ever going to experience going off for the last time. Yeah, every year these days we unfortunately say goodbye to some amazing players that we've enjoyed watching week in, week out and, and going out to battle against and competing against and playing with as well to do something that brings so much joy to so many people, I think it's the best part about being an AFL footballer. I think I could speak on behalf of us when, when I say that um, we've loved every minute of it. Thanks to everyone out there for, for supporting all us retired guys now, and we look forward to being a face in the crowd and sitting alongside you and cheering our teams on. To propose a toast to the retiring players of 2014, the reigning Premiership captain, Luke Hodge. I'm here tonight on behalf of the players to recognise those that have announced their retirement from the game in 2014. AFL players are all different. Some are lucky enough to have the physical attributes of a Jonathan Brown, the professionalism of Luke Ball, or the heart of Lenny Hayes. But while the great thing about our game is that anyone can play it, some qualities are essential for longevity. A strong mindset, an unwavering commitment to your team and the determination to succeed. This year's group of retirees epitomises every one of those qualities. So could everyone please be upstanding, raise your glass and join me in a toast to the retiring players of 2014. Cheers. Round 12 saw my Roos record a big come from behind win. Trailing the Tigers by 35 points at half time, it was vintage Brent Harvey leading a third quarter revival when North piled on eight goals in 19 minutes. Jared Ruffhead piled on eight goals of his own, not all of them conventional. It's an accidental goal. And his second game coach, Brennan Bolton, was proving to be anything but conventional. I'm not yeah. far away if I can. Yeah. Oh, I love coaching. Thanks, guys. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming. Joe Watson's season was put on ice. He's coming off the ground, Watson. And he wasn't the only bomber feeling the pain. The earth shook! <laughs> it didn't start well for the Blues. Off they go, on they go, and we're all sweet. <laughs> and the finish was no better, as Joel Selwood picked a late match winner. Oh, what a heartbreaker for the Blues. But with not a hair out of place... There it is. Yeah. Just <laughs> Chad Wingard put a big exclamation mark on round 12. Oh, baby! There's your mark of the year! Round 12. Geelong v Carlton. Geelong T Hawkins, one vote. Geelong M Stokes, two votes. Carlton B Gibbs, three votes. Hawthorne v West Coast. Hawthorne M Spanger, one vote. Hawthorne L Hodge, two votes. Hawthorne J Roughhead, three votes. Port Adelaide v St Kilda. Port Adelaide C Wingard, one vote. Port Adelaide R Gray, two votes. Port Adelaide H Hartlett, three votes. Western Bulldogs v Brisbane. Brisbane D Zorko, one vote. Western Bulldogs J McRae, two votes. Brisbane, J. Redden, three votes. 
Great. GWS v Essendon. Essendon J Danaher, one vote. GWS A Trelaw, two votes. Essendon D Zaharakis, three votes. Fremantle v Adelaide. Fremantle S Hill, one vote. Fremantle A Sanderlands, two votes. Fremantle N Fife, three votes. Melbourne v Collingwood. Collingwood C Young, one vote. Collingwood S Pendlebury, two votes. Melbourne B Vince, three votes. North Melbourne v Richmond. Richmond D Martin, one vote. North Melbourne A Swallow, two votes. North Melbourne B Harvey, three votes. Gold Coast v Sydney. Gold Coast G Ablett, one vote. Sydney K Jack, two votes. Sydney J Kennedy, three votes. So we're at the halfway mark in the 2014 Brownlow Medal and Gary Ablett with just three more chances ready to go. Has 18 votes and leads Paddy Dangerfield and Josh Kennedy by four. Trav Bo Boomer Harvey, Dane Beams and Stevie J. It's time now to have a look at the viewer vote and how you're looking at home as well. So it's a deep leaderboard, so the fans at home are thinking this way. So, well, the superstars are there, aren't they? Gaz are up from Paddy and Josh. One, two and three at this stage at the halfway mark of the 2014 Brownlow. Still to come, we present the Jim Steins Community Leadership Award. Announce the official Life Broker Mark of the Year. Take a look back at season 2014 through Mick Malloy's eyes and the exciting conclusion to the 2014 AFL Brownlow medal count.